Okay, today we're going to determine the linear regression of the stuff, of the data, using the spreadsheets. We're going to let the spreadsheet figure the slope, the intercept, the mean, the standard deviation, and something called the correlation coefficient. And we're going to do a new column that wasn't in your assignment, but is something that the um, insurance companies would do called prediction. And so make sure you have module four spreadsheet open today. And that is this one. And this is what you need to have in. Does everybody have this data in? Yeah, everybody, everybody's spreadsheet is blank, so you need to put this data in right now. Man. Yesterday there was some, somebody said the computer wouldn't let them do the scatter plot, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So go over to the columns A and B and select them all the way to there. And go up to this little icon here. So select columns A and B, including the A1 and B1. Select this. It's going to be insert chart. Now, there's no scatter plot listed there, so what you have to do is go over to charts, choose scatter, which is about halfway down on the left, and pick the one up here that says scatter chart. We don't want a bubble chart, we want a scatter chart. Click that, and hit insert. And you can move it around, you can move it off your data. Just move it off to the side. Yeah, when you're doing the scatter plot, you've got to make sure you click on it and then click the type of scatter plot you want. Then, everybody got their chart up? See a little down arrow up here? Click Advanced Edit. Advanced Edit, and it opens up this thing on the side here that says Customize. And we're going to call the name of the table a, let's just for ease call it a correlation table. So change the title to correlation table up here under title. What I did is I clicked on the advanced edit tab. Then we're going to scroll down to the horizontal axis, which is miles from the ocean. We're not going to worry about the maximum and minimum. I'm not going to do that. We're not going to scale this right now. <laughs> then we're going to go back up here where it says axis again and choose left vertical. See how there's a drop down menu here? Choose left vertical, and this is titled, very simply, percent damage. And you click off of it, and it'll put it in. So, so far your chart should look like this. And you can fiddle with all the colors and everything, but you don't need to. And the very last thing we're going to do is scroll all the way to the bottom of the exit or the edit edit tab here and see where it says trend line. Choose linear, and it will put the trend line in just like they wanted you to do by hand. And then once you've done that, you can hit update. 
All right. So that's your chart. And if you want to, just slide it off to the side because we're going to use the next couple of columns here. If it'll let me slide mine. There we go. Now I'm going to go in close again. Column D. You're going to put slope equals, just start putting these labels in, and we're going to go back and make an equation for them. And a couple more, and then R equals. And to make all these fit in correctly, you can just highlight, go up to format, and do a text wrap. That way you don't have stuff hanging there. Now, who can tell me what the slope equation is? It's a pretty simple equation. It's, I mean, make it even simpler than that. Rise over run. It's your change in y over your change in x. And so that's basically what you're going to do here. You're going to go, your equation is going to be equal slope. of the rise, which is column B. That's your Y side, and your... And so it's slope is equal to... It, so it's equal slope, parentheses, B2 to B8, because that's your change in Y, comma, a2 to A8, which is your X, hit return, and it pops it right there. It automatically figures the slope for you for your data set. So I will go back up here, slide back out. I'll come up here now. And there's what your equation should look like. So your slope equation is equal slope, parentheses, B2 colon B8 comma A2 colon A8, close your parentheses and hit return, and it calculates it for you. Now, same thing, your intercept is going to be the same exact, well, almost same exact thing. You're going to put equals intercept, open your parentheses, put your y data in there, which is b2 to b8. And your x data in there, which is a2 to a8, close your parentheses, hit return, it gives you your intercept, your y-intercept.
And the figure you mean, you can do it one of two ways. Highlight column A, go up and hit that average button, but you can just do it right here, too. Yep. Okay, I will come check average right now. Again, do average B2 to B8, close it off, and it should give you the average. Oh, sorry, that should be A. Sorry, that should be A. Going too fast. So, yeah, that didn't look right at all. Good catch there. Who was that? Nate? Yeah. So the average distance from the ocean, these houses are 1.4 miles. The average damage then is B2 to B8. Close it off. Oh, come on. Did I forget the equal sign? Oh, I hit the asterisk. $67,000 damage average. So, okay, to figure standard deviation. And again, the spreadsheet functions all do this calculations for you, so it's going to be equal STDEV of, and we want to do the distance, so it's going to be parentheses A2 to A8, same same variables, and boom. So standard deviation is STDEV, and I will, so there's the, the equation. Now for damage, it's still going to be equals STDEV, parentheses B2 to B8, Close them off, and the standard deviation is $24,000 either way off of And then we're going to do the correlation coefficient, which tells you how good of percentage you are off. So, and again, that's another function. <coughs> Equal C O R R E L. And you do both sets of data Y first, B2 to B8, comma A2 to A8. Close it off and then give, oh, come on. Why did it do that? Oh, I put a comma, thanks. Good catch, guys. There. And so that's the same correlation, 97% correlation. And the last thing we're going to do today is they have hard data here. Now what we're going to do is forecast farther away. So we're still on this spreadsheet. And I want you to do this when you get ready to do your assignment. Is the following. We're over here on miles from ocean. We're going to add some more miles from ocean. We're going to go up to 4. 4.5, 5, and 5.5 miles, and then 6 miles. We're adding to the sheet, but we're not changing any of our original data. What we're going to do is predict what's, going to, what's the damage going to be farther out. And we're going to use a function called forecast. And I'm going to slide out just a little bit so I can see my numbers. And so our last thing for today is equals 4.5.
forecast, parentheses, I want to forecast what B9 is, what damage is going to be in B9. using the data from B2 to B8 and the data from A2 to A8 if I can ever put the 8 in there close it off and I'm off what did I do? I messed up someplace. B2. What did you guys get? That's. Yeah, that should be. Hold on. Let me see here. Oh, sorry. I wanted A9. Sorry. That's. Yeah. Sorry, I messed up. I want to know. Just change a. Just change B nine to A nine, and it will fix it. So, and now, as Dana just says, we got the right formula. If you got the right formula, it's going to say twenty three point two. Drag it down, and it'll predict. The rest. Now, here's what I want to show you on this one. Four miles away, they expect 23% damage. Four and a half miles away, 16%. Five miles away, 6%. Five and a half miles, what happens? What happens at 500 mi five and a half miles away? What's the damage estimate? It goes negative, so it's going to be zero. So, 